place has really good protection and that's all you can really ask for. Very delicious. Really big storm behind me. I'm Adventure Man Dan, a regular guy who's living life to the fullest. What I do, many think is crazy, but life is either a daring adventure or it's nothing at all. For years, I've taken every opportunity to explore around the globe. But now aboard my sailboat Adventureborn, I'm the master of my fate. So join me as I travel by the wind, play in the waves, harvest food from the depths, and teach those who sail with me aboard Adventureborn. It's a little windy this morning. So it's obviously a little windy this morning. Got a pretty good night's sleep though. This place has really good protection and that's all you can really ask for. I'm gonna keep an eye on the weather. It's supposed to do some crazy stuff. Just not sure which direction and when. After a hearty breakfast, I pumped up my paddleboard and geared up to spearfish for our dinner. Paddling about a mile upwind to start the day's dive. Great. Got a little warm on that one, but a little further than where I uh, kicked to yesterday. It took me about the same amount of effort to get here, but to get back will be so easy with all the wind, it won't even be a problem. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get my gear on and probably tow the paddleboard here behind me. And, uh, yeah, so looking at spots. After swimming out a little ways, I unsuccessfully stalked the snapper. Moving on, I had some fun checking out this large lobster. Not being lobster season, that was the only way I could enjoy them. But as always, I took my time enjoying the rest of the area. Spearfishing is only one part of why I love being in the ocean. I saw a grouper at the bottom of this coral head, but unfortunately lost the game of cat and mouse. <laughs> I love seeing this kind of brain coral, with a little bug attached to it. On a longer dive, and while enjoying all the sea life around me, I set myself up in a fairly open spot and used my throat to croak and attract other fish.
Sure enough, several hogfish swarmed right over to me, allowing me to pick the biggest of the group. Hogfish for dinner. Later on, I found another hogfish a bit smaller. No need to shoot this one. Instead, just enjoyed swimming with the little guy and observing. Such a cool fish. But then later, I found a much bigger one. A solid hit. Now this powerful hogfish took me for a little ride. This fish had so much fight in it, and I was still rusty from not spearfishing for a while. It took me several attempts to gain control and finally subdue the fish. But once I had it, I was stoked. This would be plenty of fish for Maru and I for several meals. It was a successful day spearfishing. Hands down the biggest female hogfish I think I've ever speared. Usually when they get to be this big, they turn into a male. It's a hermaphroditic species, but this one is still, this looks like a female to me, but very good size is the other hogfish from earlier. You can see the size difference, pretty, pretty substantial. So yeah, this will be great. Quick, easy paddle, probably hug the cliffs and then head downwind. Yeah. Impressive too, the species changes color rapidly to match its surroundings. Incredible. Very delicious. Look at that. That's how you did. Not a bad haul. Not a bad day's haul in some of these little islands. But uh, this is about to smack me. I think this is a huge thunderstorm. This is the point where I make two colossal mistakes and pay a price for my ignorance and arrogance. First, underestimating how fast the storm was capable of moving, since I'd never seen anything like it before. Second, underestimating how fast and with how much force the wind direction would change. Following is the closest I've ever come to losing everything. I don't know if the camera can see. Really big storm behind me. I just want to get in the latest fish, and then I think we're in for quite the storm. I start to realize the extent of my mistake. Not just how bad the storm is going to be, but the wind direction change will allow for no protection from where my sailboat is anchored, instead funneling in all the energy from this ferocious storm. Here I speed up the footage so you can see just how fast the clouds come overhead and the different colors it changes to. This is by far the worst storm I've ever been in, and I'm on an inflatable paddleboard. 
The wind direction changes so rapidly that it blew me off course and away from my sailboat. Worse still was that the wind was so strong, I couldn't paddle the board parallel to the wind, so I missed my sailboat by less than 20 feet. Watch here as my mast goes by. It was a gut-wrenching feeling. on board my sailboat, this is what Maru was experiencing. There is a crazy storm outside. Daniel went out spearfishing. Good, I really hope he's fine. I cannot see any reference now. From outside. Back outside. This is not good. Really hoping this storm comes off as soon as it came on. All right, now I gotta make my, my landing here. Let's do this. Let's figure it out. Good thing is, if something does happen, God forbid, to my boat, it'll come back into here and Maru will be safe on land with me. The town over here. Just gotta stay positive. I made it on shore, see? I don't see my boat, which is good. I don't want to see it right now. As just a bit of insurance, I recorded a quick video will of what should be done if this GoPro was lost, then found, or if the worst should happen. The storm had slightly calmed down since I got on shore, but I was not sure if this storm was going to get worse since this storm had felt like an apocalypse. But what I did next took all my physical and mental strength. I'm gonna try to take a break and go for it. What took place over the next hour, I didn't film because I needed total focus. And it was now obvious that filming when I shouldn't have is what got me into this situation. But what happened next, I can honestly say, was some of the hardest physical exertion I've ever put myself through. Knowing the whole time that failure would directly result in losing my sailboat, thereby potentially endangering Maru. I would not let that happen. 
I'll soon post a breakdown video that goes more in depth about everything that happened while Maro and I were still wet, cold, and raw from the ordeal. But for now, we rejoin just after I somehow get my sailboat off the anchor and on our way out of that shipbreaker bay. Be sure to catch the video breakdown, which was recorded only moments after this. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned from my mistakes. Thanks for seeing this adventure through to the end. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, or were inspired to choose your own lifestyle of adventure. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe button to see more videos like this and help support my channel. I post new videos as often as my chaotic lifestyle allows, but if you'd like to see more content now, Check out my Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, and website for everything else or if you're interested in joining my crew aboard Adventureborn. See you on the next adventure.